Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Thank you, Jesus, that the blind eyes are opening and the lame are walking. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. Hallelujah. That miracles are flowing in this house. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. For the privilege to operate in your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Water, you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, it's awesome and power, our God. Our God. Into the darkness you shine.
Oh, oh. 
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just thank you for your majestic power. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty is endless forever. Nothing in this world can satisfy Cause Jesus see all the cup that won't run dry Cause Jesus see all the cup that won't run dry your presence, your presence is heaven to me.
Jesus the King. Let's sing Majesty. Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Jesus who died. Jesus who died. Now glorified. So exalt, let's exalt him. So exalt, lift up 
Rejected on alone, like a rubble, trampled on the ground. You turn the heart and turn to me at all for crucified. Lay behind the stone. Lay to die. To die. Rejected. Rejected. Like a rose. Like a rose. Trampled on the ground. You took the forward. Sing it again, crucify. your majesty king of glory thank you for all that you've done for us that we can walk victoriously thank you lord that we are not defeated in any area of life thank you for the grace all surpassing grace that you have deposited in our spirit thank you jesus Let's take a moment just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. Labas Kande Lebroso.
tongues as we get to pray in tongues. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. I can but bow. I lay my all before you now. In royal realm, I don't deserve. I live to serve your majesty. King of Kings, King of Kings, Majesty, Majesty, God of Heaven, God is living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend. He's a strong deliverer, beginning and the end. All within me falls out strong. All within me falls at your floor. Your majesty, I can but bow. I lay my own before you now in royal robes. I don't deserve, I live to serve, I live to serve. Let's sing it again, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. I can I can bow. I, bow. I, bow. I lay my all. I lay my all before you now. Before you now. In royal robes. In royal robes. I don't deserve. I live to serve. I live to serve. Heaven and earth. Earth and heaven. Worship. Worship. God eternal, faithful and true. God eternal, faithful and true. Who bought the nations? Who bought the nations? He ransomed souls. He brought the sinner. Brought near to your throne. All within me cries out in praise. All within me. Your majesty, I can bow. I can bow. I lay my all. I lay my all. Before you now. Before you now. In royal robes. In royal robes. I don't deserve. I don't deserve. I live to serve. Let's sing one more time. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. I can but bow. I lay my all. Before you now. In royal robes. In royal robes. I don't deserve. I don't deserve. I live to serve. I live to serve. Your Majesty. I live to serve. I live to serve. 
your majesty. My lips to serve. My lips to serve. One more time, I live to serve. I live to serve your majesty. Just a simple song. Church, Lord, be glorified. In your church, all over the world, be glorified. Wherever your people are, be glorified. In your church, Lord. In your Lord, be glorified. Let's take a moment and just pray for all the churches. Father, we lift up the pastors. We lift up the believers. We lift up your people today. Strengthen them, we pray. Thank you, Lord, that they are coming out of this. They are winning in all their ways. Thank you, Lord, that this is the victory that overcomes the world. Be glorified in your church. Make your church behold the glory that you have put in them and manifest that forth in this hour. Be glorified today in your church, we pray. Let's sing it one more time. In your church. Amen. Church, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified in your church. Be that be our prayer in Jesus name and the church say Amen. let's clap our hands and praise the Lord we want to welcome all of you that are watching us from around the world I know you've been patient waiting for the live stream well we've been able to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish put it on many different platforms for those watching by YouTube I hope you can subscribe on YouTube those that are watching by Facebook live and other places i want you to be encouraged subscribe share this because i have a word from the lord for you today i want you to get ready in the name of jesus everybody say amen say faith wins say faith wins you may be seated hallelujah of course we know that um we are told that we cannot gather as we normally would but we want to bring the word of god to you today hallelujah this is a time of refreshing. Everybody say a time of refreshing. Say it again. 
Say one more time. Okay. So I'll be sharing what God has put in my heart today. Um, I am looking at Luke chapter 5. And this was talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. It talked about how it came to pass that as the people pressed to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, verse 2, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's. And he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and took the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will lay down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And the bacon unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help. And they came and filled both the ships, so that it began to sink. Now, when Simon saw it, he fell down at, us, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, as the drought of fish which they had taken. And so was also James, John, and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ship to the land, they forsook all and follow him. Everybody say, those are history makers. Say, those are history makers. You say, I was saying the other day that history is not made by those that write it, it's made by those that live it. Don't become a person that only reads history. Become a person that is making history. Why am I saying this to you? We live in a day where some people, how you see things will determine how you come out of it. Some people are seeing this as the worst times. Of course, you know, if you live in the United States, you know that they have all kinds of loans and all kinds of things that you can get from the government and things. But the thing is, you have to be very careful. It's a loan. It is not free money, as you think. I was asking one of my um, advisor on some of the finances. I said, what do you think I should do? I said, I don't think I need it. I don't think I need it. How you see things determines how you come out of it. See yourself winning. Tell the neighbor, see yourself winning. Say it again. Now, I'm, for those of you that are watching, you're going to understand why I read this passage of scripture. And this is the call of the disciples. And they were busy doing their own thing. And then Jesus came and the crowd came with him. And Jesus now began to teach the word. But he needed to amplify his voice. So he got on the boat because the people in the boat were not using it at that time. He got on the boat and then he told Peter to just get it a bit away from the, uh, the crowd so that he could speak from there and amplify it. just simple uh, uh, physics. The voice will bounce off the water surface and then be amplified out. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Now, and he preached. And the Bible says that they were washing their nets. That meant they were busy retiring for the day. They had toiled and they had struggled and it seemed like an impossibility. It seems like everything, all hope was lost. This was their livelihood. 
And here comes an interruption. In the midst of a bad day, then Jesus comes. And he came in the form of asking something of them. You see, when God makes a demand on you, it's because there is something he's about to release to you. If God tells you, follow me, it's because he's about to elevate you. If God tells you to do certain things, and then you begin to do it, get yourself ready. You are in for divine upliftment. Now, I'm sharing this because you'll understand, like I said to those of you that weren't aware, I already finished one service to one of, our, of my daughters and her church abroad before I started the service. And I was, as I was speaking to them, the Lord began to show me something that he's about to do. Of course, you've heard me say this before, that God wants to do something fresh. He wants to do something, three things he always wants to do. He wants to do a new thing. Everybody say a new thing. In other words, God is positioning you for something the world has never seen. The second thing he wants to do is a good thing. That means it is in terms of its, um, its character. It's going to be good and not bad. You can have a, a new thing that's bad, but if you have a good thing that is also new, that's a plus. And then the, the third thing he wants to do is he wants to do a great thing with you. Everybody say a great thing. Now, now I've said that several times before, but I want to bring this message so that you understand what, why I read this passage. The Bible declares that Peter was struggling to get some fish. And here comes Jesus, takes his boat, goes preaching. When he was done, he said to him, launch out into the deep. Three words the Lord gave me. The first thing is refreshment. Second thing is refocus. And the third thing he gave me was relaunch. The first thing he gave me was refreshment. Second thing, now I have heard people tell me all that they're asking me, what is God saying in this hour? What is God doing in this hour? God is saying to you, I want you to be refreshed in this day because my spirit is moving. Now you say, but you don't know, people are going through all kinds of things. The spirit of God is moving. See, the spirit of God was moving in the face of the, of the deep in Genesis. There was darkness everywhere, and the Spirit of the Lord was brooding. The Spirit is brooding right now because something is about to start. Now, here was Peter. He was looking for fish. But Jesus took his boat and gave him something he had never seen before. We are about to enter the greatest time of revival in the, in the history of the world. We're entering a season of I mean, you're going to come to cities and people will be flocking in. And the Lord was showing me a picture. He said, there were two boats there and Peter was looking for fish. They are pastors struggling. Get ready. You're about to get a harvest of souls like you've never seen. Because the one who made the fish is bringing them to you. You know, the big thing is people are saying, well, people are not coming to church. No, people are hungry for God. There is a hunger amongst people for the real thing there has to be authenticity about our message we've got to tell the world about this jesus and it has to be authentic can somebody say amen can somebody say amen now you, be, you in a short time you understand why i am i'm talking about this he said to me three things refreshment the bible declares that in acts chapter 2 it says, Peter had just experienced, they just experienced a mighty move of God. The Holy Ghost had descended. The Bible says a sound came from heaven. Hallelujah. Get ready for the sound from heaven. God is about to speak afresh to you in your day where you are for something extraordinary. If you hear from heaven, earth must listen and bow. Now, the Bible says, when they heard, all of, uh, they heard those things, and they saw the, the people were filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they came out preaching. And the people were perplexed. They said, what is this? And then Peter starts preaching. He says, 
God says, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Everybody says all flesh. In other words, the Holy Ghost told me, he says, every person with a flesh is a candidate for the glory. They are people that are going to be preaching this gospel that you never thought would preach the gospel. They are criminals. They are Muslims. They are people from other religions. They are going to encounter Jesus and they'll be running with this gospel because he is going to appear to them and it's going to impact them so much. There is going to be a, a, a whole refreshing of, of things happening in the world because we are entering that season. Before a great move of God, there seems to be darkness. There seems to be something that causes fear and God will move. And God will move. Because God is setting this up. You see, the enemy tried to come in, but God is using this as a setup for the greatest awakening the world has ever seen. You get ready. My question is, are you in position for what God is about to do? Or are you going to be a spectator and become a person that is writing history or somebody that is making history? It's about positioning. In this days we are living in, the Lord spoke to me. It's about positioning. What is your position? Are you ready to go? Or are you waiting to see what's going to happen? In other words, your posturing, your positioning determines how you run the race. Are you with me? Are you with me? Your positioning. Everybody say positioning. Say positioning. Now, the Lord spoke to me. He says... The way you position yourself determines what your expectations are. If you're expecting to go to a higher height, you'll be in a place ready to jump. Your position determines what you are expecting to do. Are you positioning to take over industries? Or are you positioning just to maintain like everybody? You see, if you're if about to jump over something, you position yourself ready for the jump. If you're ready to do something, what are you doing? What is your positioning concerning what God is about to do? The Bible says, a poor our spirit of all flesh. That means every person is a candidate. You are a candidate. The person you don't think qualifies is a candidate. The only qualification is to have flesh. He said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. On all flesh. The old one will dream dreams. The young one will see a vision. Even to the handmaiden, to, to, to people that no one thinks. That means to the excluded, God is about to release his glory in this hour. My question to you is, what is your positioning? Are you acting like everybody else and looking around to see what all other people are doing? It's about strategically setting yourself up for what God is about to do. You see, Peter here was not in a position to receive because Jesus came and said to him, launch out. I told you three things that spoke to me. The first thing he said to me is refreshing because Peter was preaching this and when the Holy Ghost had come upon him, he began to preach. He says, he poured up the spirit upon all flesh. And this is the times of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. There is a refreshing for those. Isaiah says, there's a refreshing coming for those. That are in him. There is a refreshing that we are entering. When everybody is perplexed, you are being refreshed. What is your posturing? What is your positioning? Are you being refreshed in the presence of God? Or are you perplexed in the presence of the situation around you? If you are in the presence of God, there'll be a refreshment that you're experiencing in this hour. Let me tell you, you don't have to money. You know, you don't have to have money to buy things. God is, your faith will begin to produce those things. Money, you bypass money, you're going to go straight to other things. People come in a couple of days, they get into a house. You are about to walk into your own inheritance. Because your faith, what you see, what you see is what you get. You see, real faith sees. Real faith sees Jesus. Real faith actually sees. But most people don't know that. Now here is Peter. His expectation was very little. 
So because his expectation was very little, his positioning showed it. Jesus said to him, Okay, Mr. Peter, launch out. Now, he has already been there. So, we have, first of all, you have a time of refreshing. While you are being refreshed, something is happening. Refocus. Everybody say refocus. This is when things become priorities. You line up your priorities again and cut off all the things that are necessary. You begin to find out the noise that you hear around the world begins to die out. You can only watch TV and get online so much. You begin to come back to yourself. You begin to discover, why am I here? Why am I living in the day I'm living in now? What is my purpose? Is, what is that fire that is burning on the inside of me? What is that fire? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is that fire that is burning inside of me? It's called purpose. You begin to discover, I don't need all the things that the world throws at me. I need to focus on my purpose. It's time to refocus. Everybody say refocus. To understand the priorities of what we are called to do. Can somebody say hallelujah? You refocus and then you relaunch. Jesus said to Peter, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to show you some things that the Lord was speaking to me so that you get this understanding. Tell the neighbor, get understanding. Say, get understanding. The Bible says in verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep. And let your nets, plural, of course you've heard that before, you know, for a drought, for a catch. He says, net, plural. Why? Because Genesis chapter 1 says, dominion over the fish of the sea. We are about to come to the place where we are expressing dominion again. He was giving us a foretaste of the kingdom in motion. Now, I, I don't want to speak too high. I want to bring it down to a level you understand. I said, you refreshing, refreshment, refocus, refocus. I'll share a little bit about that. The Bible declares, you, you're going to understand why the Lord was speaking to me. He said, if you can do these three things, you will already be in position to lead. It's not going to take a couple of months. It's going to take a couple of days or weeks and things are about to change again. You better be in position to lead. That's a prophetic word. You see, a lot of people are waiting to see what's going to happen. Others are positioning themselves. Once the gates are open, they're already taking over. What is your position? Are you waiting for others to move and then you scratch your head and wonder how to get a job? Or are you planning on starting a company before the gates open so that when it opens, you're hiring other people? You've got to look at those things. Are you in the place where you're going to relaunch and you're going to go to the highest, to the, to the greatest time of soul winning? Are you focusing on winning nations just rather than just having a preaching meeting? What is your focus? Refocus. What does that mean? Everybody say priorities. Say priorities. Priority is what the Bible says in Matthew 6.33. Seek first. Pursue first. Priority first. Priority. In order of priority. Once you have your priorities in order, the distractions will disappear. The reason why we get distracted is because we haven't put our priorities right. There's nothing as knowing what you were born to do. Once you get up in the morning and you know what you're born to do, even your enemies would get out of the way or line up to serve you. Nothing can stop you. Because the, the God of the universe, including the universe, and everything will conspire to make you get there. The oppositions will begin to bow. That means they will come at you when they see the force of what's on the inside of you, they'll get out of the way. You see, nobody that has ever accomplished any great thing that has never met opposition. 
How did they overcome this opposition? There's a force greater on the inside telling them you cannot quit, you cannot fail, you cannot lose. The greater one lives in you. The greater one lives in you. You cannot fail, you cannot quit, you cannot lose. Time is not your problem. Time is actually working in your favor. The day you find out what you're born to do is the day time begins to celebrate you. And time will say, what can I do for you? Your time become more valuable the day you discover what you're born to do. Why is it that people have time and they seem to panic they're running out of it? I'll tell you why. Because they still have not discovered what they're born to do. The day you, you discover what you're born to do, time will be like, I'm here, use me. Use me. There's time for every purpose. Once you discover the purpose, the time will show up to serve that purpose. Get yourself ready. Everybody say, be in position. Say, be in position. Say, be in position. Now, what is God saying in this day? Is People say, we need to pray so that God... No, God has already forgiven us. Oh, people are going to... There were sinners in Jesus' days. They were sinners after he died and was buried and was raised from the dead. They were still sinners. They're sinners all through time. You see, they are wickedness, spiritual wickedness. But we have a role. Our role, I'm going to share with you in the, the second part of this. Because you understand what it means to refocus. For you to refocus, you must be the light. Are you hearing me? Jesus said to Peter... Launch out. There's got to be a relaunching to the same places that you seem to have failed. God is going to put you in a place you will flourish where you used to fail. You're going to go back there and take out the enemy. Can somebody say amen? You know, one of the f f sad things is this. When you have made failure, you avoid that place. Am I right? Am I right? If you made some mistakes, you don't want to go back there. God is going to set you up. It says... Launch out again into the deep. You're going to go even deeper than where you used to be. You're going to go to areas where you never thought you could be. God is about to take you to places you've never been. Can somebody say amen? And he's going to bring you, he's going to show you what you've never seen. What you've never seen. Eyes have not seen. He's going to show it to you so that once you see it, your vision, what you see is what you get. I say what you see is what you get. Say what I see. Is what I get. So what I see is what I get. It's because faith is what you see. The Bible declares in Hebrew, but we see Jesus. We see Jesus. Because looking on to Jesus, the reason I look to him is to get my focus back. What was I born to do? As the Father sent him, so send, sends, he sends me to continue the mission. Can somebody say amen? God is at work. Everybody say God is at work. Do you know there is something that happens to you when you become aware that God is really for you and not against you? You, you become dangerous. Two days ago, I wanted to share something on Daily Boost, but we, I just thought let's get the studio and everything set. I was talking about living dangerously. Living dangerously. People say we are living in dangerous times. Now, there are two things about that. It's either the times is dangerous or you are dangerous to the time. Okay, can I share a little bit with you? It says living dangerously. What you consider living dangerously to somebody else, that is their normal flow. Walking on water, it's living dangerously. What are you talking about? Being in the fiery furnace is living dangerously. Laying on lions is living dangerously. But for one person, that's danger. The other person, that is the stepping stone to greatness. What do you call living dangerously? Somebody jumps off the plane. You say, I wouldn't do that. The reason you don't do that is because of fear of the unknown. That person doing it has built the skills to know how it works. So to him, that's not danger. That is excitement. He was born to do that. And he has learned how it works. And you say, oh, see, fear and faith, you can flip it over in one switch. So what you see somebody doing, say, oh, that's, oh, that's dangerous to them. They just jump. I was watching um, a guy jumping from roof to roof. I'm just like. <laughs> oh, 
What? Jumping everywhere. The guy's jumping from this roof to that roof and jumping. I'm going like this. I just said, hallelujah. But I can open blind eyes. I live dangerously. Just a different way of doing things. I, I can raise the dead. Hallelujah. And the religious people say, oh no, Jesus. No, Jesus told me to raise the dead. So that's living dangerously. I go and do it. Somebody said, supposing you raise the dead, nothing happens. Go to the next one. He didn't kill them. Hallelujah. I mean, they're already dead. If they don't get back to life, just go to the next one and raise. First time you tried to ride a bicycle, uh, you, didn't, you didn't make it. You fell. Got a few scripts. Did you quit? No. You had to launch out again. You have to do a relaunch. Now that you know something a little better, you know that you are now winning. You cannot tell me I'm living dangerously if I know what I'm doing. Don't tell a person that's dangerous. No, they know what they're doing. If they know what they're doing, they're fine. Close your eyes. Don't watch. Have you seen a, a, this uh, a tight wire act? People climb, climbing on a tight rope of a Niagara Falls. You close your eye, open it like this. <laughs> You're looking. And those people are very fun. They know they're not going to fall, so they do this. <laughs> just to get us, you know. They just fake like they're going to fall. That's part of the excitement. And they watch you sweat. They're not sweating. You're sweating. You say they are living dangerously. Now, people say the times are dangerous. No, the times are just times. It depends on your impact on that time. It determines whether the danger is coming to you or you're impinging danger on the situation. Are you hearing me? That's why the Bible says if fear no evil. That means anything evil should fear you. Any sign of the enemy around you should be afraid you're showing up. That's what it means to be a light. Everybody say, I'm a light to the world. Say, I'm a light to the world. Now, let me show you something. Acts chapter 13, verse 47. Let's look at that scripture. I want to show you three things the Lord spoke to me. He says, refreshment. You are in refreshment. Receive that refreshment. Stop stressing out. Relax. You're not going to die. You're not going to be sick. That little thing that's happening doesn't mean you're sick. Just relax. Don't get sick. Get loaded. You don't get sick. You're not human. Why are you acting like an ordinary person? Everybody say hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Now I want to make this practical today so that you understand what I'm talking about. Why? Why? When you become aware of what God has loaded in you, I'm telling you, you will run without being tired. I've heard some people say, don't you get tired? I said, I don't get tired. The Bible says you shall run and not be weary. Why? You're running in the place of what you have designed to do. A person that is, that is doing all these things that they're designed to do, they don't get tired doing it. You watching it get tired. Am I right? They're doing it up and down. A dancer will dance for hours. They don't get tired. You watch them for two minutes. You're sweating. I see you're the one dancing. They're like, and uh, we were watching. We were in Nigeria, and uh, Prophet he, his people would probably tell you this. And these young men were doing break dance, and they're jumping and bending their back and hitting the ground. And when they do that, I'll look at Prophet Fahey. I would go, oh, oh, ow! We were feeling the pain. <laughs> Have you ever seen people like that? They're doing break dance and they're doing helicopters. They're doing all kinds of things. I'm looking at them like, ah. I said, no, 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 that's not how we used to do it. Those days we had technique. This young man is just using brute force. You want to go to bed that night and take two pills just to get the pain off your sight? <laughs> what am I saying? When you speak, faith is what you see. Everybody says, faith is what I see. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 20, it said, we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. The things we see and hear is what we speak. 
We cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. We cannot but speak. There is something, there's a different kind of sight that you see. Why, why do you see those things? Because light is the key to sight. You can have perfect vision without light, you cannot see. That's why he says refocus. Everybody say refocus. The reason you've been out of focus is the uh, blurred vision. It could be because the light is dimming. It's because you, you, your mind is confused. But today, God wants to bring clarity to your mind again. Can somebody say amen? The days of staying and letting 24 hours go without you making an impact in that 24 hours over. It's time. Are you with me? Are you with me? We speak of the things we have seen and heard. Acts 13 verse 47. We're going to read that. I want to show you. You are a light. Say I'm a light. Say I'm a light. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Acts 13. You have more than a vision. Be the light. <clears throat> the Bible says, <clears throat> it says, for so have the Lord commanded us. Tell the neighbor it's a command. <clears throat> Say it again. It says, <clears throat> I have set thee to be a light. Say, I'm a light. Say, I'm a light. Say, I'm a light to the nations. So, I'm a light to the nations. Now, the Lord dealt with me this morning, he said, the nations are crying and nations are hurting. You are the answer. <clears throat> In other words, what is your position? Are you positioned as the solution? Once the world is looking, can you go there and say, I got it. I'm the answer you're looking for. Can somebody say amen? What you see is what you get. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm a light to the nations. Say, I'm a light to the Gentiles. The Bible declares that you should be for salvation. Say, I am for salvation. Say, I am for salvation. Now, let's put it in context. When I was meditating upon this, the Lord spoke to me. He says, do you know you are the solution the world is looking for? You are the solution. Position. Everybody say position. When you position yourself as the solution, the world will come to you. Don't position yourself as part of the people with a problem and line up for problem line. Line up in the solution line. The problem people will come and pay you. Are you hearing me? Today, we're living in a place, people are crying and screaming. Let me tell you. Remember what I said about a crisis? What is the secret to handling a crisis? The secret is being steady in the middle of a crisis. Remain calm. The crisis will not last forever. The biggest mistake people make in a crisis is begin to react. They begin to throw things. They begin to do this. That's the worst thing you can do in a crisis. In a crisis, you are supposed to be steady and even kill. Hallelujah. Everybody say light. Say I'm light. Say I'm light. Let me give this to you. Every day I'm becoming more aware of a greater reality. Beyond having a vision, you become the vision that people aspire to. You become the solution that people will look at and have hope. Do you realize that if you walk in a place, what do people see of you? You are the hope for the world? Oh boy, anyone else? Are they looking for somebody else? Two men came to Jesus and they said, are you the one? Or she will look for another. Are you the one? The world is looking for answers. It's looking for solution. Are you the one we're waiting for? You know how religious people tell, oh no, I'm not the one. Then get out of my way. I want the one. Say, I am the one. 
the day you decide to put I am and the good stuff after that, you're in good, in good company. Many years ago, I was talking about the power of I am. If you say I am the solution, watch your life change. If you say I am rich, watch your life change. If you say I am winning, watch your life change. Because the power of I am is behind the rest of the thing you say. Good or bad. I am loaded. I cannot be sick. I am healthy. You see, I was saying the other day in the daily boost. I was saying that also on Wednesday. You see, healing is the children's bread. But divine health is for the adults. Children play with bread. Good health is for those that have come of age. They know that no sickness can come close to them. Can somebody say amen? Now, what do you surround yourself with? Everybody say, be in position. Say it again. <clears throat> say it one more time. Now, when you decide, I am going to be in position to be the solution, what, what happens? The world begins to line up looking for you. Say, I am the, the, the solution. Say, I am the solution. The Bible says that you should be the light to the nations. Let's keep reading that. We're going to get that to, down to it. It says, I am a light to the, to the world. To be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Let's keep reading that. We're going to go to verse 48. This is what it says. It says, and when the people heard it, they were glad. When you come to somebody that says, I am your answer, they become glad. Not mad. Religion, see, and now, this is Peter struggling with our purpose. The fishing business wasn't going very well that day. Here comes Jesus. He says, okay, Peter, connect with me. I'm going to take you places. You know, he didn't get that at the beginning. He says, let me have your boat. The way God engages you, God will ask of you your best to give you his best. Why? That's the principle God lives by. How? He gave his best to get his best. He gave Jesus to get us. He didn't give us an angel. God never gives you his second best. He will give you his best. And when you, when you, when he ask for your best, and when you release your best, then he hands you his best. Are you hearing me? Faith is what I see. Say faith is what I see. Say faith is what I see. See, the Bible says we cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. The things we have seen and heard. The things we have seen and heard. You've got to begin to speak of what you see in the spirit. Do you know God is so simple that people, we, we are complicated. We said, but is this really what it is? Jesus said to Peter, so just launch onto the deep. Um, Mr. Preacher, you know, I heard you're famous. Uh, I, I just don't want to be disrespectful, you know. I'm the fisherman here. You know you don't catch fish in the daytime. You catch it in the evening and at night when the fish is about to, they don't know we are coming and all those things. You know, we have a strategy. Okay, but Mr. Jesus, we know you're famous, but we heard that your former job used to be a carpenter. And Jesus said, launch out into the deep for a catch. Now, I can imagine Jesus saying to him, hey, now launch out into the deep for a catch with a smile on his face. And Peter's like, oh, messed up, like, ah, oh, Jesus, I just want to go home. Mm. You know how people grumble? We grumble ourselves out of a miracle. Because his answers saves a lot. It shows a man grumbling. He says, we have toiled all night. That's called complaining. Jesus said, can you imagine Jesus comes to him? Because we think Jesus said, launch out into the deep. No, that's not how he sounded. I'm the Lord. Now thou, Peter, you launch it out there boat to the deep. Say the Lord. Say it me, right? <laughs> Say it me. 
No, he just, he must have been done. He says, hey, I'm talking about the kingdom. See, when you come to this kingdom, it's, a, it's an everlasting kingdom. You win, you reign, you rule over that kingdom. Okay, I'm done now. Okay, Mr. Peter, okay, come on. I know you've been waiting for me now. Get into the middle. I want you to launch into the deep. Let's go and catch some fish. Can you imagine the conversation? Really, just people don't make it sound like that. They make, because Jesus was easily heard by the ordinary people. His talk was simple. He comes and says, okay, guys, you know, I got Peter, launch out into the deep. We're going to get a big catch. <laughs> Peter was like, you know, a sailor. He's like, I'm the pro here. But he didn't say that he was thinking it like, you know, Jesus, <laughs> good preaching. But um, you, I just can't, I just have to ex give you the facts. The governor told us. Not to do certain things. <laughs> Brother, we have to be, we have to obey. Because the law is at night, the virus spreads faster. <laughs> Isn't that funny? They close early as if the virus was okay. We are coming now at six. Where are you? We're coming to get you. Am I right? I don't know what kind of thinking. And they'll tell you, oh, you can come to church, but you can go and buy drinks and line up. Am I right? You can go to Walmart, essential service, buying booze. Very essential. But you can come to the place where you can be enriched to deal with that small thing can i have a big amen I'm, I'm not against them i understand what they're talking about but my understanding is why would you allow us to come to the store and we are more crowded than we are in the church the church is probably cleaner because we don't use it every single day Well, I'm not a politician. Now, for all those nice politicians watching, I love you too. Use common sense. That's Peter's attitude. Well, Jesus, you know, let's be reasonable. It's, it's date. You see, listen, the light is up here. We've been struggling all night. But you know what? I think too many people are looking at me right now, Jesus. I'm just going to let one, one net, one. I will let down a net. Okay, baby, are you ready to preach? He just grew. Oh my goodness. He is really, he's in position to preach. Oh, you, the rest of you better watch out. Everybody say hallelujah. Now hear this. This is Peter. Jesus said, let down your net. Let, uh, let us go for a drought. Now you have to understand what what that, that word drought meant, not just a catch. He's saying, let's go for the home run. That's, that's the language of the day. He's telling, he's telling him, say, hey, I know you've been strong. He said, listen, I used your boat. Let me give you my payback. That was your seed. Me using your boat was the seed. Let me give you my harvest. He says, now, okay, Jesus, let us go. Uh, you know, Jesus, uh, Peter said, Jesus, you know, let me talk to my guys and see whether we can come. They must have come to an agreement and said, oh, give me one net. Let's see. Write this down. When God has extraordinary on his mind, you better have extraordinary on your mind. When God is thinking all things, you better be shifting your mind to all things. If it says, I've set you as a light to the nations, start thinking nations. Don't think you're street anymore. It's time to enlarge your capacity. The Lord was speaking to me about those things. He said about the refreshment. He talked about the refocus and then the relaunch. And then he said to me, put them in three sim simple ways. Number one is creativity. Number two is capacity. Number three is conductivity. Are you hearing me? Three things he spoke to me. He said, if you understand creativity, 
That means you can create what the next thing is. The second thing is capacity. Once you enlarge your capacity to God's capacity, God will fill it in. Our problem is we come to God with a small capacity and God said, what can I do with this? You don't need me. You came based on what you could do. Come to me based on what I can do. Let me do it through you because it's God at work in you. How big is your God? How big is God in you? Are you thinking, I'm talking about setting your positioning. Three things the Lord spoke again. He says, your creativity, your capacity, and your conductivity. That means your conduct conductivity is your ability to allow as an electrician. You know what I'm talking about. How are you resistant to the move of God? Or are you allowing God to conduct himself freely in you? It's like how, how much resistance are you putting? Or you have no resistance to God putting himself through you. Conductivity. The biggest problem is not what God can do. The biggest problem is us allowing him to do it through us. God wants to do big things. He wants to do a new thing. He wants to do a, a, a great thing. But he can only do it if you let him do it. Conductivity. Our biggest problem is not the problem. Our biggest problem is our thinking. How we think about the problem. God is thinking, you have a problem, create the solution. That's why the problem is before you, because you were born for this day to become the solution. And then what do you do? When you create it, next thing is think of capacity. Jesus spoke to Peter. Jesus' capacity was nets. Peter's capacity was net. Big difference. No longer they lost some fish. Because the net was breaking. We lose what God wants to give us. Because we do not understand his capacity. You see that. You, can you understand why I'm, I'm talking to you about this now? What is God saying now? Position yourself. Position yourself. Program yourself. You've got to program yourself for success. You've got to program yourself that you are not begging. You are not in, in, on the list of those that are wanting. You are in the overflow list. Stay in that place. Position yourself. Watch what happens. While the economy and everything was going bad, you were in position to receive. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Peter had a capacity problem. God deals with our capacity problem by planting the size of what he wants to do how does he do it he says let down the nets what has god told you to do he says all things are possible so start stop talk thinking and talking some things start thinking all oh, change your capacity recalibrate your capacity when you change your capacity watch the kind of creativity that will flow through you are you hearing me The example is the build that we had, that we are still doing. You notice we were not thinking limitations. We were just thinking, let's just get it done. Let's go. What do you need? Let's get this done. Let's, why? As we were doing that, we we're more creative. But when you start shrinking the capacity, your creativity is no longer because there's a restriction to your flow. Now, some people will tell you, you see, when you have, when you have limited resources, then you're more creative. That's not correct. You see, you can have limited resources. It's a seed. You're not looking at a limitation. You're looking at a creativity. It produces the capacity. You see, creativity is what increases the capacity. If you're creative, you build. That's why a business starts little. There is no business that's big. It starts as an idea. And then 10 years down the road, it's worth billions of dollars. And people are surprised how that became a billion dollar business. How? A small idea, creativity, increased capacity, and there was conductivity. They were allowing the idea flow through them, and that's how you increase and take charge and be the leader. Can somebody say amen? 
I, I, I just helping you guys. Three things that spoke to me. Creativity, capacity, conductivity. Peter was resistant. But he allowed Jesus to do something. But his resistance, normally they have resistors. His resistance caused him to lose some fish. He says, we have told all night. The, the command was fish. Get as much nets. Let down your nets, your nets, everything you have. Lay them all down. And now Peter says, ah, we have told all night. But at your word, it seems like he was agreeing with God. He wasn't. He had resistance. There was no conductivity. Did you get that? See, our speech can tell us whether we are conductors or resistors. Are you a resistance? You see, any resistance is weighed out by persistence. Push through, the resistance will get out. Can somebody say amen? Every resistance that has come into your life, don't stop. Because as you're pushing through, creativity will begin to come out of you. Can somebody say amen? What am I saying to you? You were in this time, you said you had a little flu. Shake that flu up. Let me tell you, when you're so full of purpose, every sickness just disappears. I'm telling you. People say, but no. Listen, we get too comfortable. Be on the cutting edge. Be on the limb. That's where you have the good fruits. Be out on the limb. Go out there and see what God can do. That's called faith. The limb is bending down. Fine. Stay there. Is dangerous? No. It's not dangerous. What you call a miracle is simply you living the realm of God. Change your capacity. Let God's capacity be yours. Can somebody say amen? If you're living the realm of the Father, the same thing will happen to you. Can somebody say amen? It says, if made us a light to the nation, say, I'm a light to the nation. Say, I'm a light to the nation. The Bible says, when the Gentiles heard it, they were glad. It says in Luke chapter 2 verse 32, it says you are a light to lighten the Gentiles. Luke 2 32, you are a light to lighten the nations. I am a solution to the nations. I know the nations need my light. The reason why the nation is, is confused is because the light they had became dull. They need the real and true light, Jesus. Can somebody say amen? He is at work in me. Say he's at work in me. Say he's at work in me. What, what happens? Philippians 2.15 says, In the perverse generation, you shine. In a crooked and perverse generation, you shine as light. You shine. He didn't say that Jesus comes from heaven and shines. He said, in the midst of a painful world. In the midst of a world that things are going wrong. You now begin. Philippians 2. Verse 15. It says you shine as light. In the midst. It says that you may be blameless and harmless. The sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of our crooked and perverse nation or generation among whom you shine as light in the world say i am the light of the world it didn't say somebody else it says you in the midst of the world's cry you are the voice of hope say i am the hope of my world say i am the hope of my world three things you do number one creativity number two capacity number three conductivity god can only work with as much as you allow him to how much is your capacity with god we're talking about building up companies and things like that we want to have our own app app building companies and things like that we want to create all kinds of things in the family as part of this we our goal is to create one million jobs in 10 years. How about that as a family? Hallelujah. One million jobs, that means one million families can have sustenance. 
That's the kingdom. That's a nation. Can somebody say amen? We are a nation. The Bible says we are royal priesthood, priesthood, a holy nation. We are a nation. Why are we acting as if we are just a church? No, we are the kingdom. We are a nation. Can somebody say amen? Say, I get it. Say, I get it. Say, I understand it. In this world today, I want you to write this few things, and I'm going to stop for that. Be the answer. Be the one. Be the restorer. Be the miracle. Be the story. Be the vision. Be the inspiration. Be the light. Be the answer to prayers. You want some more? Be the reason why people want to win. Why people can hope. Be the king or be the queen. Just be. Be the door for orders. Be the door. Don't become a wall. Become a doorway that others can enter through and get into their destiny. Can somebody say amen? Be the salt. Season the lives of people around you. Cause them to rise to their potential. Be the joy. Should I explain all those things to you? Should I go down and do it again? For those that are watching, get the CD. <laughs> Download it online. So, but we can get it for free online. That's why your supporters of this ministry will give it to you for free. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Be the faith. I'm going to explain this. I'm just giving you the list now. Because I, I, I came today with something in my spirit. It says, Be the faith. Be the example. Be the salvation. Be the peacemaker. Be the change. I don't like how things are going. Nobody changes because you don't like it. You change and they will change with you. People change. They respond to you based on what you become. When people come around me, all of a sudden, they begin to produce at a different level. Why? Because they see, I produce, I lead. I don't just tell you things. I show up to get it done. And then they begin to respond like that. And it translates. Be the change. Say, I am the change. Now, I said, be the solution. What am I saying? The world has problems. When you show up, solution shows up. You are the solution. The Bible says, when you stand before people, don't worry what you're going to say. Our problem is we want to worry about what we're going to say. I've learned that. When I stand before, when I stand before prime ministers of countries or presidents of countries, I never think about what I'm going to say. I never plan. I never have all these things all written out. When I go there, I'm going to say this. No. The Bible says when you stand before men, don't worry what you're going to say because in that hour, your father would download it to you. Why am I going to stress myself out? Spending 10 hours trying to prepare to come and speak? No. Why? When I stand, I get the download. In that hour. Power for that hour. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? Be the answer. What does it mean to be the answer? That means people are praying. And you show up and tell them you're the answer. I remember the first time I said that many years ago. People looked at me and said, you prayed? God has answered. I'm the proof. Like 30 years ago, and all these religious people say, who do you think you are? The answer. And now today, people say, I am the answer. I say, oh yeah, good. You learned from a good example. And we're going to wipe the devil out. Can somebody say amen? I said, be the one. They came to Jesus and said, are you the one? Are you the one? People are looking for the one. Question is, do you know you are the one that the world is looking for? Be the one. Say, I am the one. See, when you say, I am the one, that's confidence. It's not arrogance, it's confidence. 
What does it mean? If you're arrogant, that is ignorance being loud. But confidence comes with competence. You know you've got answers you can produce. Be the reason. Be the cause. Be the restorer. When people are down and out, they are hurting, restore them. Become the one that restores other people instead of destroying them. People have made mistakes that come to you. Don't become like the, the religious people. They just look for a reason to destroy others. Become a restorer of people. Can somebody say amen? Be the miracle. Everybody say I am the miracle. What does that mean? You see, when people are looking for, for a miracle, you be the miracle they're looking for. Acts 2.22. It's a Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God. Approved of God with miracles. Be the miracle. When you show up, miracle shows up. Can I have a big amen? And then the rest of them, I will continue next week and give it to you. I just want to be nice and give you some ideas on how to do it. I give you the list so you have to listen next week and get the rest of the story. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Always remember this capacity, creativity, conductivity. When you understand that, allow God to work in you. Allow God's capacity to become your capacity. And then let his creative nature becomes, become yours. For those of you that have never received Jesus, my dear friends, that's the best thing that you can ever, ever make. A decision to accept him as Lord and Savior. You said, oh, I'm a messed up person. Let me tell you, he's a good cleaner. He is a good savior. He, he loves you. He will help you. He will build you. He's never a condemner of people. Satan is the one to condemn. Your sin condemns you, but not Jesus. Jesus loves you, and he believes in you. He believes in you. I want to encourage you, if you've never received Jesus, three, three different people I'm going to talk about. Those that have never received Jesus don't know who he is. Second group of people are those that have made mistakes, maybe even bit down by situations or religion, whatever it is. I want you to know God accepts you just as you are. He wants to help you. He wants to build you. And then the third thing, uh, for those people that, you know, everybody has said things and maybe you, you used to have a relationship, but you walked away. He loves you. He welcomes you back. If you've never known Jesus, if you're a Christian, but you've never experienced him, you can experience him. And there are others that walked away. He wants you to know him personally. I'm going to pray with all of you right now. Stretch your hands towards me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all of those ones that want to experience your joy. I release joy upon their lives. I want you to say this when you say, Dear Jesus, your death was real. Your life was real. You died in my name for my sins. You took my place so that I don't have to, so that I can be free. Today, I trust in your love for me. Thank you, Lord, that you have redeemed me. You have restored me. You have revived me. You have renewed me. Thank you, Lord. I am yours now. I forgive my past. I repent of it. I thank you, Lord. It's a new day with new possibility. I welcome your friendly voice into my heart. I forgive those that have hurt me. I let the past go. And I breathe afresh the breath of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I want to give you an opportunity for all of you that have receive or pray that prayer for the first time, write and inbox us and let us know how we can be a blessing to you. We'll send you something at least to get you started, bring some restoration to you. We want to do that. Inbox us, let us know that it's been a blessing to you. Second thing also is I want to give you an opportunity. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings. If this message has been a blessing to you, share it with others and you want to sow a seed in the kingdom of God with joy. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. That means you give with such hilarity you're just excited about giving to god now sometimes you give is painful you know but uh, smile because you understand the principle god is about to release something to you you can go to our website you can go to christlove.org and you can click that button and sow a seed and god will bless you and for those of you you can go to paypal.me slash charles different will be able to receive that if you have if you want to make out a check make it out to 
Christ Love Media. And then you can send it to P.O. Box 72800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. I think all those details will be down there. I want you to share this with other people. I told you the key is positioning yourself. So position yourself so that you can be creative. You can have a capacity for what God wants to do. And also allow God to be at work in you. I pray that today's broadcast has been a blessing to you. We were trying it. I apologize because we needed to get a few things straightened out. Um, the whole platform coming on about five different platforms. We wanted to kind of up the ante. And uh, we, you know, of course, you know how that is. If you're going live, you're going to have some, some um, uh, beginning, beginning struggles, you know, that happens. But we have learned from that. Made the adjustment. I think we, we are wiser after we've, we've learned from some of the errors we did. The guys are doing their very best, I know. And I pray that this has blessed you. The audio and other things. Let us know how the broadcast is today because we had to get the audio kind of rerouted in different ways. Let us know how this is a blessing to you. And uh, thank you again for watching this program. Go to ChristLove.org and so seed. God bless you in Jesus' name. And for those of you here, we'll give you an opportunity to, to bring your tithes and offering. I want to say this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you dwell in the presence of the King forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. And we'll see you guys tomorrow on the Daily Boost. Amen. <laughs>